Only 48 miles long and 37 miles wide, the smallest state in this land of ours is the state of Rhode Island. But although it is the smallest state, Rhode Island lays claim to a greater number of historic sites and other points of interest than can be found in some of the largest states in the Union. The first white settlement in Rhode Island was founded in 1636 by Roger Williams in order that he and his followers might enjoy religious freedom. Today, throughout the state are reminders of an era when America gained her independence and grew to maturity. This is the famous old Kingston Inn, which continues to serve travelers as it did during its reign as a regular stagecoach stop. Nearby, in the town of North Kingston, is the birthplace of Gilbert Stewart, the famous artist who painted our best-known portraits of George Washington. And here, in the town of Anthony, is the homestead of General Nathaniel Greene, second in command of the armies of the American Revolution under General Washington. But perhaps the proudest symbol of Rhode Island's stirring past is the old colony house at Newport. With the reading of a proclamation from this balcony, Rhode Island became the first of the original 13 colonies to voice its acceptance of the Declaration of Independence. On the shore of Narragansett Bay is Rhode Island's capital, the city of Providence. Providence is also the state's greatest industrial center, Rhode Island being one of the most highly industrialized states in the Union, producing more industrial goods in proportion to its population than any other state. Number one industry is the production of textiles, and Providence, her busy mills turning out millions of yards every year, plays an important part in supplying the nation. The oldest university in Rhode Island is Brown University, which looks down on Providence from one of the city's highest hills. Dedicated to the spirit of religious tolerance, Brown is proud of its charter that has ordained through the years all the members hereof shall forever enjoy full, free, absolute and uninterrupted freedom of conscience. In the northern part of the state is the wool manufacturing city of Woonsocket. Were you to visit Woonsocket today, you might think you were in a foreign land, for almost everyone in the city speaks French. A large portion of the population being of French-Canadian descent, signs, newspapers, local radio and movies are usually in the French language. And until recently, English was taught in Woonsocket schools as though it were a foreign language. In the western part of the state, near the Connecticut line, is the city of Westerly, a typical New England town blending an atmosphere of culture with the successful air of a progressive industrial center. Westerly, too, is an important textile town, but Westerly's main industry is granite its quarries yielding several varieties of fine-grained stone, particularly suitable for delicate carving done on monuments. Another of Rhode Island's industries is commercial fishing. And here's a fair sample of those famous Rhode Island lobsters. Not all of Rhode Island's communities are given over to industry, however. One of the nation's best known resort cities is Newport, famed for its elaborate summer homes. In the old sections of Newport, history comes alive along the narrow streets. During the British occupation of Newport during the Revolution, the tyrannical General Richard Prescott had his headquarters in this house. And in the heart of the old city is Washington Square. Here stands a statue of a former resident of Newport, Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry, the hero of the Battle of Lake Erie. The most interesting historical marker in Newport to many is this mysterious tower known as the Old Stone Mill. The worn inscription on its rocks never has been fully deciphered, but it is believed 
that the mill may have been built by roving Vikings centuries before Columbus discovered America. Although less than half of Rhode Island is devoted to farming, highly scientific methods of agriculture have developed a high yield per acre. The State College at Kingston specializes in research and instruction in the raising of small farm produce. And they do pretty well, too, by the looks of this fine crop of Irish cobbler potatoes. Experiments at the agricultural school have resulted in improving plants such as this high-growing, heavy-bearing blueberry bush. Mm-mm. Now just bring on that flaky pie crust. A few farms are devoted to the raising of oats, alfalfa, and other feeds for Rhode Island's major farming activity, dairying, with about four out of every ten farming acres being given to the raising of cattle. The raising of poultry is also an important farm activity. Recognize this fellow? That's right, the famous Rhode Island Red. For recreation, Rhode Islanders usually turn to their 246 miles of coastline with its clean, white-sanded beaches and stretches of quiet water. Boating goes well with Rhode Islanders, too. From homemade skiff to seagoing cruiser. Sails ho! The many regattas held off the Rhode Island coast number some of the top events of the yachting calendar and attract boating enthusiasts from all parts of the globe. Indeed, there you have Rhode Island, the smallest state of the Union, but with a heritage and individuality unsurpassed by states many times her size. Rhode Island has history dating from 1636, the year Roger Williams founded the first white settlement on Narragansett Bay. She has always had singleness of purpose, being the first of the original 13 colonies to accept the Declaration of Independence. And she has sound representative government, administered from her capital and largest city, Providence. Hers, too, is the distinction of being the most highly industrialized state in the Union, producing more textiles, jewelry, and other goods in proportion to her population than any other state. And hers is the spirit of freedom and tolerance in which the state was born and to which Brown, her oldest university, is dedicated. A tiny state, Rhode Island, smaller than many counties in other states, but with its history, industry, and spirit of friendly invitation, it is a state that contributes an important share to the prosperity and general well-being of this land of ours.